What's up, y'all? I got a family to feed, so let's get into this tea. We about to get into YSL trial. Lil Woody begins witness testimony, gets frustrated on stand. Let's get it. Good, good morning. Mr. Copeland, do you know a person by the name of Shell Cal? I don't recall. I said you don't recall if you know someone by the name of Shell Cal? Sustained. <laughs> oh, thank you, Chrissy. <laughs> Do you recall speaking with law enforcement about an individual that you know by the name of Shell Cow? I don't recall. <clears throat> I want to go back to December of 2014 and into January of 2015. Were you present at a gambling house in Lakewood uh, when the shooting occurred? I don't recall. Let me ask you. <clears throat> also back in 2015, do you remember being at a Cascade skating ring, speaking with an individual by the name of Shell Cow. I don't recall. Mm -hmm. Looking like a little aggravated baby. Back in January of 2015, do you recall being at a um, club, Club Crucial, and getting into a fight with an individual by the name of Shell Cow? I don't recall nothing. Hold on. First of all, this boy was fresh as hell today, y'all. Fresh as hell today. Like, I don't know why he got his, why he's so wrapped around a lady like that. Look at him. The boy had that shit on. He's still free. I guess that's his little, I don't know. I can't hear nothing. Okay, well, anyway, my bad. It happened years ago. Okay. Which 20 V1? He got another one? Do you recall in January of 2015 having to go to the Atlanta Police Department to talk about a murder, to talk about whether or not you were involved in the murder of an individual by the name of Donovan Thomas Jr.? Say that again. Do you recall in January of 2015 having to go to the Atlanta police department? They dropped the one with him and Charleston White. That's the one I want to see. Department to speak about your potential involvement in the murder of Donovan Thomas Jr. I don't recall. All right. <clears throat> in January. On January 11, 2015, did you go to the Atlanta Police Department at about 3 o'clock in the morning? I don't recall. Okay. And did you speak with a detective by the name of Detective Thorpe? I don't recall who I speak with. I don't recall. And during that interview, did you go down there to speak with the murder, to speak with him about the murder of Donovan Thomas Jr.? I don't recall who I spoke with. Okay. And in that same interview, did you speak with him about not just the murder of Donovan Thomas, but events that led up to the murder of Donovan Thomas on June 10th, 2015? I'm a liar. So you want me to re remember something that I don't lied about in the past? Like, I, I, I don't know. So my question for you is, did you go to the Atlanta Police Department? Is your response you don't recall? Yeah. I don't recall. Okay. And during that interview with Detective... <laughs> Y'all, did they switch the lady out to ask questions too? For ...at the Atlanta Police Department, did you provide him your name and your da and date of birth? Huh? When you went to the Atlanta Police Department and met with Detective Thorpe, did you give him your date of birth? I don't know. Okay. 
and is your date of birth July 25th, 1991? Yeah, because this nigga's a Leo. Date of birth, July 25th, 1991. I think. Okay. And during this interview, did you tell Detective Thorpe that you also have a middle name of Xavier? I don't, okay. I don't know what I told I don't remember what I told him. Okay. I'm not trying to say the wrong thing so y'all can lock me back up. All right. Well, just bear with me. We're going to go through that interview, okay? Reaction to the commentary. Now, regard the commentary by the witness. Now, during the interview, um, did you speak with Detective Thorpe about the issues you had with a person by the name of Kel? I don't recall. <clears throat> Definitely two lawyers, but you know, some grimy, some grimy ass lawyers, uh, Leo's out here. Did you speak with Detective Thorpe about a problem that the two of you all had in the club? Mm, I don't recall. Okay. And did you tell um, Detective Thorpe in that same interview that Kel was Nut's little brother? I don't know if they brothers or not. Okay, so do you know who Kel is? No, I don't recall. Okay, and when I say Nut, is that Donovan Thomas Jr.? Uh, you asking me that? I am asking you that. Say that again? Sure. Do you know a person that goes by the name of Nut? I don't recall. Okay. Now, in that same interview, do you did you tell Detective Thorpe about you and Kel getting into the fight at Club Crucial? I don't recall. Nothing from 2015, 14, 16, none of it. Okay. And during that same interview, did you um, tell Detective Thorpe that you and Kel had been in a beef for maybe about no longer than four months? And this was back in 2015. And he's still alive? My question is, did you tell Detective Thorpe that you and Michelle Kel at that time in 2015 had a beef and it was probably going on around four months at that time? <sighs> They tell them whatever they want me to say, whatever they want to hear, whatever, whatever. So if I said it to them, I said it to them. I don't recall what I said to no police. Okay. And during that same interview, did you tell Detective Thorpe that whenever y'all were in the club, y'all would initially just throw up birds at each other? What? In this January 11, 2000 interview, did you tell Detective Thorpe that initially when you and Shokel were in the club, y'all never really fist fought. Y'all just would throw up birds at each other. Not when niggas was at the club, they was throwing up birds at each other. <laughs> like what? Like I told you, before y'all called me to trial, I have lied. I made things up. I told you this before y'all brought me in this courtroom. And I'm telling you now, you asked me about 2015, I have got my life together. Y'all trying to put this on my conscience. Y'all trying to put people's life in my hands. I don't lie on people. I don't want to be here. Y'all have pressured me. I'm tired of y'all. Because yep. y'all know y'all are wrong. And y'all black people doing this to us. Oh. And I understand that. Leave me alone. Let me leave. Man, y'all pissing me off. Listen, I don't recall nothing I said to no police. Stop asking me these questions. Okay. I'm telling you, I don't recall. I understand, but we're going to have to get through the questions. You can just Girl, we need the whole interview. <laughs> I need that whole part of the interview. <sighs> Not just breaking down the interview in two minute increments. Uh, 42 seconds. Okay, let's go to this one. 
Did you tell Detective to work? Oh, no, that's the same woman. <laughs> when you met with Kel at the Cascades Catering Ring, he asked you to call Thug. Okay, so this is what happened. Okay. The police kept locking you up for whatever they could. And Law and crime have the whole thing. On me, and they keep bringing up Thug's name. So what I did was to get them off of me, I said, Thug did this, Thug did that, Thug did Because I knew they would never, I knew he didn't do it. And they, I, in my mind, I knew that the police would never go mess with him. So it was easy for me to. Child, law, oh, my bad. Law and crime, eight minutes, nine minutes, eight minutes. God damn. It's all good, though. We, I know we're going to have to tap into some things. Monday morning now, and I need to find out from you what your intention is with regard to um, whether you are going to testify in this case. You have been granted immunity so that um, the privilege of self-incrimination is no longer relevant because the state can't use anything that you might say in answer to their questions or any other questions against you, um, and you have been instructed with the benefit of counsel as to the consequences if you don't testify so i'm asking you now what your intention is may i speak you can answer my question please and so you're under subpoena the state intends to question you are you going to answer any of those questions are you going to testify in this case well young i've been pressured from the get -go. You know what I mean? Like, even when I went to the meeting with Glenville, I have told him over and over and over and over. You know what I mean? I, this is on my conscience. I, I got to keep distracting myself every every day because I'm being dragged down in here to here because of lies that I don't told. I'm tired of y'all bothering me. Okay, well, I'm sorry that you're tired of being bothered, but you're under subpoena. It's a valid court order. So your decision at this point is, yes, I will abide by the subpoena and testify, or no, I will not abide by the subpoena and the immunity order, and I will be held in contempt for my refusal and put in jail. So which is you? Well, damn. Wait, wait, wait. I thought, oh, if he didn't testify, they said he would go to jail. I thought they gave him the option to not testify, but if he did testify, he would go to jail. So yeah, you ain't got no choice. He ain't got no choice. Oh my God. Streamlabs shutting down on me. Not Streamlabs, OBS. Are y'all still on here? God damn. Y'all still here? Oh, shit. I thought it shut down. Okay. Your decision. But I did it time for all my crimes that I was caught for. Sure. This, is, this would not be any kind of punishment for any crimes you may or may not have committed. This would be that you have been ordered by a court to testify. And if you refuse to testify, you're held in contempt. You're saying, I refuse to listen to the court's order and obey it. And it is not a punishment, it is an incentive to have you change your mind and obey the court order. So which is your decision? Can you explain it to me? Yeah, so we talked about it. It's the same thing that Glenn is doing to me? It is the same order that is still in control. You have a subpoena for your testimony. That is a court order. You also have a court order that says anything that you say can't be used against you other than if you get on the stand and lie and it is it amounts to perjury, you can be charged with that or with false statements. Um, but if you refuse to testify altogether, when you're under a court order to do that, then that is considered contempt because you're saying, I don't care what the court has ordered. I'm not going to do it. And then you'll be put in jail through the end of this trial. So my or until you decide, you know what, I think I will testify after all. 
So let me, Young, I'm telling you to your face. You just said that something about it, they can lock me up for nine. I'm telling you to your face, this is all I do. And you're telling me that they can lock me up if I lie. Yeah. But if, they, if I sit here and testify, so the e way going to jail. No, not with regard to anything that you might testify to that might otherwise admit to a crime or admit to your involvement in a crime. That's what mm. the immunity order does. And I'm sure Mr. Melnick has explained. So that. he got a snitch, basically. That like they going to make him tell the truth or he going to jail. You and I know I've explained it previously. Prison. <laughs> but none of that is going to result in you being put in jail because they cannot use that evidence against you to prove any of those crimes that you might incriminate yourself about. He get, he gets immunity? Well, he got immunity, yes, but it is granted if he snitch. <laughs> That's what she just said. So are you going to testify or not? Do you want to talk to Mr. Melnick again? No. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to have you step out for just a minute while we get the jury in. Mr. Melnick, if you could step out with him, please. Just so. Thank you. Would it so aggravate you? Yes, ma'am. I, I am. I was going <laughs> to see if anybody had anything to say first. Your Honor, I'm going to renew my motion for a mistrial based on coercion by Judge Glanville. This is based on the fact that Mr. Copeland, having now early instructed that he would only be incarcerated until the end of trial, versus his instruction previously that he would be incarcerated forever. Um, he's now deciding to testify. Um, I think at this point, it demonstrates the coercion by Judge Glanville. So I'd like you to reconsider that. Uh, I don't think it just demonstrates anything of the sort. I think it demonstrates that he has now been properly advised and he's making a decision anew. Thank you. Overruled. Yes. Uh, housekeeping matter. Uh, is the Harvey rule still under your yes. guidance, still in yes. effect. Okay. Yes, it is. Thank you. Okay. And so I'm going to have the jury out. I'm going to give them the three instructions that we just um, discussed. Then we'll have Mr. Copeland in. I'd like him resworn. And then. Um, yeah, I don't recall. It's not lying, correct? So I'm saying he got to like come out and like. He got to come out with some information. Like how much information he got to come out with. And to do all this and still go to jail is blasphemy. You can pick up from uh, whatever you want to do post him June 12th. Hey, Your Honor, may I just step outside to see if Mr. Melnick has informed Mr. Copeland that there's going to be some testimony he's going to have to repeat my interactions with Mr. Copeland. He'll get frustrated. Okay, you know? you know what? Why don't you, instead of you going to talk to anybody, just let's, can I have Mr. Melnick in again yeah. real fast? That's a good idea, though, to tell him that. I don't know if he's been told that or not. I don't think Mr. Melnick was in here this morning when we were discussing the directions or the instructions. Um, uh, you're going to bring them in after giving instruction, maybe excuse me. Certainly. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Melnick, I just wanted to make sure, because you weren't in here this morning when we were discussing it, and you may or may not have been in any of the times we were discussing it, but um, we are going to be 
essentially redoing everything post recusal motion. And I didn't know if Mr. Copeland was aware of that or not. So some of the things he's going to feel like. Okay, let's go to the next one. All right, Mr. Copeland, I'm going to remind you that you are still under oath. Go ahead, Ms. Hilton. Thank you, Your Honor. Good, good morning. Mr. Copeland, do you know a person by the name of Shell Cal? All right, we watched this one on the other one. So let's do this one. With each other. So going back to January 11th interview with Detective Thorpe, did you tell Detective Thorpe that you and Kel talked about the beef that the two of you had with each other. I don't recall. Okay. And during that, when you and Kel spoke, Kel asked you to call a thug on the telephone. It's a fact on the listener, Anna. It's a what? I'm sorry. A fact on the listener, Your Honor. Not whether or not he called, but what he did in response to being asked that. All right. So, did you tell Detective Thorpe that when you met with Kel at the Cascade Skating Ring, he asked you to call the... Okay, so this is what happened. Okay. The police kept locking me up for whatever they could. Every time I count those the police was on me, and they keep bringing up the name. So, what I did was... To get him off of me, I said, thug did this, thug did that, thug did, because I knew they would never, I knew he didn't do it. And they, I, in my mind, I knew that the police would never go mess with him. So it was easy for me to try to throw the blame off on him to get them off of me. And that's what I was doing from all these years. I don't remember what I don't told them in the past, but my whole motive was thug did it because I knew he didn't do it and they couldn't lock him up. And they keep talking about it, thug, 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 thug. So guess what I'm going to tell them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what else you want me to tell him? Yeah, he killed this person. Yeah, he did that. That's what I. That's what I'm gonna do. And that's right now. If you tell, if I walk out of this thing and, and and they say they police stop me now, hey man, give me something about the about to make something about him again. On January 11, 2015, when you went to speak to the police, when they called you, did they ask you about Thug or did they ask you about the murder of Donovan Thomas? I don't know. I don't. Re I don't remember. Did you go down to the police department on your own to tell them that you did not kill Donovan Thomas? Uh, did I go on my own? Did you walk into the police department by yourself to tell them on the morning of January 11, 2015, that you did not kill Donovan Thomas? I don't recall. Okay. So you don't recall going to the police or you don't recall why? I don't you recall none of that. Right. I just know... They, every time the police was after me, trying to get me, they kept bringing his name up. And I knew that they had me what I had, so I was like, yeah, 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 whatever y'all want me to say, I was here. That's what I told Gaither and Dennis, and that's why they kept coming after me, because they felt like, okay, they can make a case out of him or whatever they trying to do. So they knew that, okay, we're going to get Woody today. He's going to have something to say about the, and it's wrong. And y'all are wrong because y'all know that I'm full of and y'all keep trying to drag me in here to bring up. Y'all know I don't say it. Why? So he can't just say, I don't recall and leave it at that. Like we have nothing to talk about. I don't recall. The end, nigga. Why y'all doing it? Leave me alone. Wait, if y'all gonna charge me for what I did, I don't did the time for the crimes y'all caught me for. Okay. Would you mind your language while we're sitting here in court? I'm trying to. You got me. I'm, I'm on. Y'all need to give me a break because my blood pressure is real high. I keep telling y'all, leave me alone. Okay. And the quicker we get through this, the quicker we can leave you alone. Do you understand? Okay, that? I don't recall. Okay. Going back to January 11th, 2015. I don't recall. You, can I finish the question? Aiden, listen to the question first. When you went to the Atlanta Police Department, Detective Thorpe didn't ask you about Thug. You brought up Thug. Do you recall that? I did. You did. Okay, so let's continue. During your meeting with Detective Thorpe, when you went down to the police department, did you tell him about the beef that you were having with Kel 
with Shell Cow. Am I here to tell the truth or to remember my lies? I want you to tell the truth. But you keep going to my lies, though. That's what you... Back in 2015, did you tell Detective Thor that this was a lie? I done told the police whatever. Listen, when they get me, I'm, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to try to tell them <laughs> whatever I can to finish my way out of whatever situation that I'm in. Okay. And it's only now in 2024 that you're saying that everything you said in 2015 is a lie. Is that correct? Because I went to the feds. Y'all didn't let me out of jail to wait four, four years later. So if I was telling the truth then, why it took y'all so many years to, to try to say, okay, he was being honest or whatever the case is. Okay. If I was telling the truth, y'all would have made any case back then. Y'all knew I was lying. Y'all put me in jail. I go do my time. I get out of jail, try to get my life together. Y'all trying to drag me back into the lies that I don't made. Y'all, what is, what's up? Can I ask you this? In 2021, when you interviewed with investigator Vivarito, after you got out of prison, did you tell her that everything you said back in 2015 was the truth, but we, but we as a state didn't believe you back then? So, so my thing is, right, uh -huh. I went to jail. So the lies that I was telling, they didn't go for it. Y'all didn't go for it. Whoever didn't go for it. He using his feelings, like, and they don't give a damn. And he got to understand that they don't give a damn. And he just need to say, I don't recall. So I went and did my time for it, right? And then y'all got me again. So guess what they say? Well, we're we going to bring up the name again. And guess what I'm going to do? Try to finish my way out of again because y'all ain't touching for the lies I don't told on, on them in the past. So guess what? It ain't nothing to put the blame on Thug for what I did. Okay. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to blame him for... And let me, I, I don't recall. Okay, now let me ask you this. You keep talking about Thug, but did were you asked about other individuals as well? During all these interviews, were you asked about Shannon? And I'm, I'm going to put the blame on him. Okay, were you asked about Demikion Garlington? I'm going to put the blame on him. Were you asked about Quindaria Zachary? I'm going to put the blame on everybody but myself. Okay, and during this time... Did all the police, every time you spoke to someone, did they tell you that they are going to have to verify? What Why would he walk into the police station and do that? You said. And did they? <laughs> My I question have to you, answer the question that she asked you. Did they tell you that we had to verify everything that you said? I don't recall. Okay. And when they told you they had to verify what you said? You continue to talk to the police. Because with the knowledge that I have, it's nothing to treat the police. But if they had to verify what you said, they had to make sure that what you said was true. How could you trick the police? Easy. I ruled. How could you trick the police? Easy. How? I can't tell you that. Okay. Were you aware that the things that you talked about were verified? Sustained. Boy, she caught, boy, you threw. She called his ass. I think he think this going to save him from thug or something. I don't know. All right. We're going to take a quick break. Y'all all step back to uh, the jury room. Oh, he's trying not Thank to you. look loyal. I mean, he's trying not to look disloyal or something. Thug, right, we'll yeah, thug, I got fat in there. How long y'all think this is going to be going on? Be I don't know which, which I person. Uh, go out. Uh, you can go out. Thank you. You say go out? Yeah. Just stick very close. Ms. Melnick, you're going to go out there with him. All right. Thank you. All right. For <laughs> I don't recall. Can you go to the bathroom? I don't recall.
Supposed to say until January or sometime mid 2025. That's a long time. I think Young Thug about to get life or some shit. I could be All clearly right, wrong. I don't to know. To remind but. you that nothing that any attorney says in questioning is evidence. And I need you to strike uh, uh, Ms. Hill. Because at the end of the day, I don't recall. You know what I'm saying? Last uh, question it. entirely from your minds. At Go the end of the day and only at the end of the day. Thank you, Mother. Going back to this January 11, 2015 interview, did you tell Detective Thor that once um, Thug and Kel had a conversation and you thought everything was squashed between you and Kel, Back in January of 2015. I don't recall. Push your question. Sure. Did you tell Detective Thorpe in the January 11th, 2015 interview that at the Cascade Skating Ring, Kel and Thug had a conversation and you thought your beef with Kel was squashed? You left the Cascade Skating Ring. My motive was to get the heat off of me. The only way I was going to get it off of me, what I thought about putting on the, okay. I felt he was rich and the police locked me up, do what they want to do to me because I'm broke and I can't afford to pay for a lawyer. He rich, they're not going to bother him. So I said, I, I, I made, I put the, I got it off of me by putting it on him. How was telling the police that the beef was squat? Their phone conversation puts anything on the... Because I got I got a, I got a line to go up to get it off of me. So you gotta sit the pattern in. Okay. Next, did you tell Detective Thorpe that you on Monday you all went to Club Crucial Club Crucial on the Monday before Donovan Thomas passed away? I don't know what you asked. Okay. Going back to January eleventh of 2015, did you speak with Detective Thorpe? about going to Club Crucial on the Monday before Donovan Thomas passed away. I I told the detectives, I don't know nothing by their name, but everyone they talked to me, as long as they sit in front of me, I was going to put the blame off on everybody, anybody to convince them to get off of me. How was going to Club Crucial? I don't remember what I don't told the detectives. I don't have a clue what I don't told them. That's why I can't tell you exactly what I don't told them because I can't remember what I said. Okay. Did you go to Club Crucial the Monday before Donovan Thomas was killed? I probably did. All right. And at Club Crucial, did you get into a fight with Kel? I don't recall. Okay. Did you tell Detective Thorpe that you got into a fight with Kel at Club Crucial the Monday before Donovan Thomas got killed? I probably did. Don't ask me shit from 2015 because I don't know what you're talking about is what I would say. And did you tell them that was after you were flashing money while you were on the stage? I probably did. I know I, I would detect this thought. His brain was the size of a squirrel brain. So you could just tell him anything. He going to go for it. Yeah, right. At this time, the state's going to ask for permission to treat Mr. Copeland as a hostile witness under pursuance I, of 24 6, 6 11, Your Honor. Granted. Thank you. Damn, what, what that mean? Hell? Don't worry about it. That's just for her to understand how she can ask the questions. You just continue to answer them truthfully. It's the don't worry about it for me. Mm -mm. What is a hostile witness? A witness who is antagoni antagonistic to the party calling them and be unwilling to tell the truth may have to be cross-examined by the party. Isn't it true that in, January, in this January 11, 2015 interview that you told Detective Thor that at Club Crucial on that Monday before Donovan Thomas was killed that um, Kel punched you in the back of your head? I don't recall what I told you to do. And is it all? I'm sorry. I don't want to cut you off. I don't recall what I told him specifically, however you pronounce it. Okay. 
And is it also true that after Kel punched you in the back of the head, then other people came and began jumping on you as well? They tag on come. That's not the question I asked you. Is it true that you told Detective Thorpe during this January 11, 2000 interview? Why would he say that? That after Kel punched you in your head, that other mem other individuals also began to jump on you as well. I don't recall what I don't told the police. And also in that same interview, is it true that you told um, Detective Thorpe that after they jumped on you, you ran outside of the club? To get wet. You Did remember you, that? Is it true that you told Detective Thorpe that after they jumped on you, you ran outside of the club? I ain't doing no running. Okay. Uh. And is it true that after you, after, after you ran outside of the club, that you told Detective Thorpe? I ain't doing no running, um, Miss Hilt. Okay. Well, is that what you told Detective Thorpe? I told you, I tell him anything. Okay. You want the truth, though, but I ain't doing no running. I'm going to make other people run. All right. And once you went outside All right, of the club, you saw an individual by the name of Bloody J. Did I do something to him? Once you went out of the club, did you tell Detective Thorpe that you saw an individual by the name of Bloody J? That nigga said, uh, to get what? Maybe he meant I, I, that would be the only reason why I would be running outside is what I'm getting from. I recall. Okay. Like, nigga, I ran outside to go get something from the car right quick. <laughs> That's it, though. You know what I'm saying? And when you saw Bloody J outside, you asked them what was up. Like, why did they beat you up? I don't recall. Okay. And that one of your friends ended up beating up Bloody J. I don't recall. Okay. Then you also told Detective Thorpe that after this incident on Club Crucial, the Monday before Donovan Thomas was killed, you told him about a meeting that you were aware of involving an individual by the name of Mo. Do you recall telling Detective Thorpe about this meeting with a person by the name of Mo? I don't recall. And that the meeting with Mo was about you and Thug. You were you and Thug were the topic of discussion at this meeting with this individual named Mo. Sound like some else I make up. Okay. And that at the time Mo is actually in prison. I don't, I... Okay. I don't recall. All right. And that the guy in prison, he's supposed to try to get you and Thug killed. I don't know about Thorpe, but I'm still here, ain't he? That's not my question. Isn't it true? That's what you told Detective Thorpe. Nobody gonna do nothing to me. So do you not remember telling Detective I don't know why he acting so tough as a snitch, though. Like, it's just not making sense to me. Detective Thorpe that? I don't told Detective Thorpe anything. Okay. Also, in that same interview, did you then tell Detective Thorpe that once you were made, once you found out about this meeting, you reached out to members of If Gang and asked them if they were going to kill you and Thug? You sound cop and deuces. I'm sorry? You sound cop and deuces. What the I hell does that mean? asked you, isn't it true, Detective Thorpe, that after you heard about this meeting, it don't even matter <laughs> that they have it on audio, friend. He's saying, I don't care if it's on audio or not. I did say it, but I lied. Next. About people wanting to kill you with the, you text people of If Gang asking them if they want to kill you with the. I bet you don't got any tip messages. So my, my answer is, you want me to tell the truth. And the truth is, when I talk to Detective Thorpe, whatever his name is, I told him anything. And I'm telling you today, it was a lie. And today, I'm telling you, I made things up. Okay. So, there is the God and his truth. So is it your testimony today that there wasn't, that you were not aware of a meeting 
that you were the subject of wanting my, to kill you? My answer is I don't recall nothing. I don't told the detective. So, okay. and I'm telling you, whatever I did tell, I was making it up. Okay. It don't take a rocket science to figure it out. Right. Did you also tell Detective Thorpe about a shooting at a gambling house in Lakewood? Huh? That you also told Detective Thorpe about a shooting at a gambling house in Lakewood. I probably did just to try to make my story seem more convincing. I don't recall what I don't told them. I don't know. So the problem is these things are actually happening or these things actually did happen. And during the course of that shooting at the Lakewood house, Thug's car got shot at. I don't recall. Now, did you also speak with, isn't it true that you spoke with Detective Thorpe about the night before Donovan Thomas got murdered? So it may seem like I'm trying to help Doug out. I'm not trying to help him out. I don't care nothing about him, what he got going on, nothing. I care about the truth. The truth was I was going through a phrase in my life. A phrase? And I have put all the blame on him. Okay. I don't know what he did. I don't know my own. But y'all got me on the stand, and I'm telling the God and his truth. Leave me out of this. I made all these stories up, put the blame on him to get myself out of the situation because the police told me they want a big fish, and I'm a little fish. They ain't who I want. So when they told me that, my only motive was to convince them that I'm telling the truth about this guy right here, and I'm lying. All right. Isn't it true that you told Detective Thorpe that the night before Donovan Thomas got murdered, you were actually at the studio with Thug. I, I doubt it. I, I don't recall. Okay. And at the studio that you were at was DJ Drama Studio. Yeah, I don't recall. I don't, know that. I don't, I don't recall. All right. Have you ever been to DJ Drama Studio with Thug? Uh, I don't even know who DJ Drama is. Okay. That nigga lying like shit. <laughs> Uh, okay, Lou admits he played the victim to protect himself. Huh? By the time we get to June of 2015, were you the victim of a number of retaliatory shootings because people thought you killed Donovan Thomas Jr.? It calls for speculation. Well, as to the compound question, you can try to ask it more simply. Um, He's at, she's asked, I'm going to have a rule with regard to speculation because she's asking about his own mind. So in June of 2015, were you the victim of a number of retaliatory shootings? Well, y'all locked me up in well, February. But, I got out March. Y'all locked me back up again in March. I got out April. And then the feds came to kick me in my door June. So I basically was in jail most of the time. So I don't remember, I don't recall being a victim of a lot of shootings. Okay. By the time June 2015, we already talked about your girlfriend's mother's house was shot up, correct? Mm hmm You were shot at while driving on the highway, correct? I don't recall. Okay. You, your child, and your child's mother were shot out while you were leaving the home, mm -hmm. home correct? You also had... I was shooting back. We're going to get to the fact that okay. you shot back. Yeah. You also had another shooting at another family member's house. Is that correct? What is it? I'm asking you. I don't, I don't recall. Okay. So by the time you speak to the police in June of 2015, you or your family were the victim of a number of different retaliatory shootings. I guess. I don't and that was all as a result of people thinking that you killed Nut, correct? Right. Now, Miss Hilton, that is speculation. Okay. Okay. Was it your belief that it was because people thought you killed Nut? They didn't think. When you said they didn't think, what do you mean? I don't recall. Uh, That nigga just there so he don't get fined, y'all. Literally. Now.
in the same January 11, 2015 interview. Did you tell Detective Thorpe that you were in a gang? Huh? In the same January 11, 2015 interview, did you tell Detective Thorpe that you were in a gang? I don't, I don't recall. Okay. And did you tell Detective Thorpe that some of the beef that you were having with Kel is because you were not down with ABG anymore? I'm from Canada. We never liked it them. Okay. We I'm never asking, liked it them. Did you tell Detective Thorpe that the reason this beef is because you were no longer down with ABG anymore? I'm from Mechanicsville. My neighborhood is known for killing them. Damn. That's not my question. I would never be part of their game. Okay. Do you recall telling Detective Thorpe or Detective Thorpe asking you, okay, so you left ABG and your response to that question, yes, but that was in about 2013. I went to I went to jail in 2013 or 12. I went to jail in 2012. I did a year. But when I went to jail in 2012, I didn't get down with the gang no more. I told him I wasn't in it. Do you recall telling Detective Thorpe that? Being questioned by the police, the main goal is to be a victim. And that's what my motive, to play a victim. So if Detective Thorpe asks me any question, I'm going to play a victim. So I'm going to say whatever they come to my mind, to make myself look innocent and, and to be a victim. Okay. And then you also told Detective Thorpe <laughs> that when you got out in 2013, you Didn't just... Didn't he just say he wasn't a victim to some shit? Stop going around and you just wasn't claiming it anymore. Did you call telling him that? Can you say that again? Sure. You also told Detective Thorpe that once you got out of jail in 2013, you just stopped going around and that you weren't claiming it anymore. I don't run behind nobody. Okay. And then did you also tell Detective Thorpe, so now they think I'm with Thug, I'm claiming YSL. Again, I'm talking to Detective Thorpe. So if I did see that. Okay. And as you said, that is about, so because you ran, I'm going to get some money, but I'm going to claim YSL. Can you say that again? Sure. You told him, so now they think I'm with Thug, I'm claiming YSL. It's about rap, so I'm going to get some money, but I'm claiming YSL. I don't know what you're saying. Okay. I don't either. Now, you keep saying that you told Detective Thorpe whatever it is that you wanted to say. Um, it's that, good. That you were finessing him. Correct. Do you recall telling Detective Thorpe, I'm not trying to go to jail. I'm not trying to do any of that. I don't want none of this. Me and nut ain't never had a problem. And I still ain't trying to go to jail. Okay. So why would you be lying to Detective Thorpe if you did not want to go to jail? Can you say that? Why would I be lying to him if I didn't want to go to jail? All right. What you mean? Uh, you keep saying that you were just lying, lying, lying. Why would you lie versus just telling him the truth? That's how I was raised. I was raised up to lie to the police. I was At an early age, I was taught to lie to the police. But if you're trying not to go to jail, why would you lie to the police versus telling them the truth? You're trying to trick me? I'm, I'm asking you a question. I'm not going to confess. Confess to what? Nothing. When you went in to, on January 11th, were you there only to talk about the murder of Donovan Thomas? I don't know what, I don't know what I'm, I don't know what I'll be, I don't, all I know is if you give me an opportunity to talk my way out of the situation, I'm about to talk my way up out of the situation. <laughs> During the course of your She definitely almost just got his ass. Were you asked about what your Instagram page was back in 2015? I don't recall. Okay. And back in 2015, is it true that your Instagram page was Woody372? I don't recall. I had a lot of Instagram, so I don't know. Okay. Is it true that's what you told Detective Thorpe that your Instagram name was? I tell Detective Thorpe anything. Do you also recall telling Detective Thorpe that 
because people thought you killed Nut, that you were getting a lot of threats on your social media page. I think I was throwing people back. Okay. Do you recall telling Detective Thorpe that you were getting threats on your social media page? I don't, I don't know. I don't, you know, Detective Thorpe talked to me and I can't remember what I said to him because I was making it up. And you're asking me right now and I'm telling you to your face, can you look me in my eyes? I'm telling you to your face, I made it up. Okay. Isn't it true that you told Detective Thorpe that someone posted on your Insta, page? can you look me in my eyes for me? <laughs> I'm going to die tonight unless you delete the comment, but you screen. I'm still here, ain't it? Is that what you told Detective Thorpe? I don't, re I don't recall what I told Detective Thorpe. And, and you actually showed a screenshot on your phone. I told you, play, you a, play a victim. That's the key. I wonder if they going to... <laughs> lock him up after this I really do okay you have permission to approach you know you can come and look at that How much time y'all think he gonna get? So one, tell me, do you recognize, do you see yourself? Mr. Carl, I'm gonna show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 378, Yankee Alpha One. Tell me, do you recognize, do you see yourself in that picture? Yes. Um, and is there a date on that picture? Yes. What is the date on that picture? Uh, the date you've been saying. Is that January 11, 2015? Yes. And is that the interview room? Is that the interview room at the Atlanta Police Department where you interviewed with the detective? With, with the detective? I don't recall. You're right, this time the state might like the tender six to the three seven eight Yankee Alpha. I can't. <coughs> oh. You're right, the, the state would like the tender six to the three seven eight. I could not have her job. Yankee Alpha one into evidence. All right. It's admitted. Corey annoying. What happened now? Next so y'all, Carl just get down with the get down, baby. Corey think he's doing some baby. In that picture. Yes. And is that date um, January twenty eighth, two thousand and fifteen? Yes. You are this time to say like the tender six to the three seventy eight Yankee Bravo one into evidence. Admitted without objection. Now looking at three seventy eight Yankee Bravo one. Do you see yourself, Detective Gaither, Detective Dennis, in that photo? Yes. All right. And on that date, do you recall, did you speak with them about your car being shot at on, um, you, on the highway at University and Pryor? I don't know. Do you recall ever speaking to police about your car being shot at on University and Pryor Road? I don't know. All right. In this interview, back on January 28th, 2015. This is Tom. Didn't you speak with Detective Thorpe and Detective Dennis? Excuse me, strike that. Were you arrested in on January 28th, 2015? I don't know. Did you go into this police interview voluntarily? I don't remember this at all. So the other judge that was on it. Uh, who got, I forgot what the word is called. Is it recused? I don't know. Who is no longer on this case. Is he still a judge? Like, when that type of shit happened, did he get fired or something? Okay. Do you remember speaking at all 
whether it was on January 28th or any other date, about the shooting on the highway to the police. He's not a judge anymore? I don't, I don't recall. Okay. In that interview on January 28th, 2015, do, do you, didn't you tell Detective Gaither and Dennis about um, being at a pool party before being shot at on the highway? Uh, I don't recall. Okay. And while you were at the pool party, there was an individual by the name of Bushi at that pool party. I don't recall. And that Bushi was the girlfriend of Yak Gotti. I don't recall. And that after you all left this pool party, you were... Child, we've been reacting to this shit for an hour. What time is it? 7.30. We're driving on the highway in your brother's vehicle. It's going to be the last one I'm going to do with this. I don't recall. Do you not recall being shot at on the highway? You don't recall t- telling this to the detectives? I don't recall none of this you're talking about. Okay. Do you, so you don't recall being shot at on the highway? I've been shot at a lot of times. Specifically in January 2015, do you recall being shot at on the highway? Why you in your brother's vehicle? I don't. Re- I don't. Re- I don't remember. Okay. I don't. Do you remember telling the detectives that you were shot at on the highway while in your brother's vehicle? I don't remember what I done told the detectives. In the January twenty eighth, two thousand fifteen interview, didn't you tell the detectives that while you were driving on the highway, you had your radio up? I don't recall. Okay. And you also turned up as you had your radio up, you heard pow, pow, pow. I don't recall. Okay. And did you also tell detectives that you then again heard another pow, pow, pow? And so you ducked down. I don't recall. And did you also tell detectives then the car stopped working and you tried to hit the gas, but it cut out and it stopped working? I do not recall. In the same interview, did you then tell detectives, so the dudes, they came up to you and you was concerned because your car didn't work, because the car wasn't working? Nah, I don't recall. And then- Hell no. He's just going to, I don't recall us to death, girl. We're going to end this video. Y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comment section below. Um, child, I just wish he would have never snitched a long time ago. He probably would have been did his time and got all of this over with and didn't even have to be involved. But he's probably so involved that he's just kind of screwed in this situation. So y'all let me know what y'all thinking. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Hell yeah.